So have you been thinking about painting your airplane? Today on Flywire, that's what we're going to look at. Paint your airplane. Good idea, bad idea, what's all involved in it. So stick with us. So before we get too deep into this, uh, let's talk a little bit about the process, not just the process of painting from the, the paint shop's perspective, but from the owner's perspective, is uh, of course you got to start out with the airplane, and you got to have a budget, and uh, then you have to have some kind of concept of what paint job you want to use, and uh, what kind of works for the airplane, because if you paint the airplane in some scheme that looks really good to you, and other people don't like it, especially with that airplane, then you might have trouble selling it if you have to sell it in the future. So you got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. All right. So um, inspiration. You come up with a design that works with the airplane. What's your inspiration? Is it a previous design like this one is? This gill pattern I really love. It's uh, been kind of a standard uh, go-to bonanza scheme for a really long time. I really love this scheme. The uh, A36 that uh, we have, the Whiskey Bravo, has got a real kind of a late model scheme and that works with that airplane. Uh, I don't think that this scheme would work with that airplane because it's too long bodied, but this uh, gill, scheme, gill pattern uh, I really like a lot. So we come with that concept. That, um, But here's full disclosure is, is I actually didn't plan on doing an entire paint on this airplane. Uh, what I planned to do is change the end number. And uh, I didn't like the end number that it had. It was hard to say, and it didn't actually represent the airplane. And this one was available, 33 Charlie. It is a 33 Charlie. So that's where we came up with the end number. And I wanted to make that change. And I also want to get rid of the logo. The logo, uh, uh, well, let's say, say this. The uh, history of this airplane, it started off in uh, Holland. Uh, flying for KLM, it was uh, teaching new pilots how to fly, and that paint scheme stayed with the airplane for quite a while. It went, after uh, KLM was done with it, it went to England and flew under a different N number. We call it an N number, it was a G number there. Uh, but um, it flew under a different number, but the same scheme. And then it was imported to the States, of course it was made in Wichita, but uh, after it was came, ba came back to the States, um, the uh, Woody Lessiker down in Houston repainted it in a scheme using this scheme, but with a kind of a light gray color. And they flew it for a while and then they sold it to this company called IFTA. IFTA was another training outfit uh, subsidiary of uh, All Nippon Airways. And that logo, that great big blue hockey stick thing uh, that was on the airplane before, that was ANA's logo. I didn't like that very much and I wanted to get rid of that. So we uh, uh, took it to the paint shop and then with the whole lockdown thing, the opportunity came up to actually do a little bit more detail and maybe go to this scheme. So we did that. But full disclosure, the wings and such, uh, I didn't, uh, the base coat seemed really good. The paint seemed really good. So we decided that all we had to do is scuff and sand. Uh, scuff it, sand it, and then paint on top of it, and it would be great, because all we're doing is this white coat, white base coat, we're going to add the uh, Starburst. The inspiration for this was actually serial, this is serial number 135. Serial number 134 had kind of a red scheme uh, with gold, I think it is, and then uh, Starburst. It looked great. I thought it looked fantastic, so that's where I wanted to go. And as you'll see in the video, we actually had trouble once we put the uh, Starburst pattern on and we started taking the, uh, uh, the tape and the coverings off to, to protect the undercoat, um, uh, it turned out that the paint didn't adhere, the original base coat didn't adhere at all. And if we'd flown through some rain, uh, it would have sloughed off in big sheets. It would have been really ugly. So um, that's part of this process is understanding how all this works and what are the pros and cons. And it ended up costing a lot more than I'd planned on spending just to change the end number, so I feel a little bit silly about that. But uh, uh, it looks great right now, in my opinion. And you know, I have a thing for red, white, and blue, so there you go. Let's check out what it is the process for uh, actually shooting, you know, actually the paint shop, how they do this. All right, I'm, with, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to talk about painting your airplane. We're at Flying Colors of Texas at Gainesville Airport in North Texas with Mark Zello, who owns this, this outfit. 
and uh, he's painting the airplane we're going to show you in just a minute. He's going to tell us a little bit about what it's like, uh, what it involves, uh, what's involved in painting an airplane. It isn't a simple process. No, it's not. Uh, depending on the, uh, the type of aircraft, we normally uh, get it in, do a visual inspection, see if there's any previous damage on the airplane. Uh, if it is a factory paint, it's been repainted, if it's been stripped, uh, a lot of variables and what we have to work with uh, according to what the condition of the airplane is and what the customer is looking for. Uh, normally we pressure wash. Uh, after that, we apply a chemical stripper and take it down to bare metal. Uh, we check for corrosion. Uh, before we strip, we pull all the flight controls, uh, including the flaps. Uh, we get, uh, a, uh, we cover all the surfaces as far as the windows. Anything that uh, would be affected by the stripper is covered with uh, aluminum foil tape and plastic. The, uh, after the stripping process is done, uh, we go look for any damage, corrosion, body fillers, things like that, and we have to go back and address that. Uh, after the airplane has been prepped, we use a metal etch product that uh, is for paint adhesion. Uh, then we use a uh, epoxy primer, and then we use top coat with a polyurethane, normally Exalta Emron, or Sherwood Williams Jet Club. Uh, as far as uh, on some of the lower end airplanes, we are able to do what we call a sand and shoot, where we don't take it all the way to bare. We prep it, uh, we do strip all the control surfaces, and we apply a sealer to it, and then top coat it which is a little more cost effective if you've got something like a 150 or something that you cannot uh, justify spending the money on. We'll, we'll sometimes do that and still get a good product. And, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a paint job that'll still last 20 years. Well, you're explaining all that process and what that really sounds like to me is an awful lot of labor. And, and actually, that's probably 95% of the cost of the uh, It of the is. Uh, we, we'll spend an average of two weeks, two men, two weeks, to get one stripped and prepped. And then we'll start applying the primers and top coats. Every time that you add a color, you're going to add probably three to four days labor, doing layouts, retaping, recovering everything, and say a white with three color scheme, you're probably looking at if everything goes right uh, a month to get one of those done. Now if you're looking at, say, a, a new build such as an RV or something, uh, you know, that saves Probably we can do one of those anywhere from two to three weeks, 30 days tops. Cool. It's an evolved process. And, yes. uh, and it didn't shape. The, uh, the paint, um, let's see, the blue paint on this airplane is what, $600 a port? Something like that? Yeah, the, the reds are the most expensive. Reds and yellows uh, are definitely the most expensive. And then if you get into metallics and pearls, where you have to clear coat, you know, you're looking at, you know, you could be looking at a thousand dollars a quart on some of that stuff. And then just your basic uh, white paint job with two colors, uh, you're looking at probably $2,500 just in materials alone. Where a gallon of white is your cheapest, it's still $350 per gallon of white. So that's, it's, uh, it's expensive. It's not like going to Home Depot and buying a gallon of house but yeah. yeah. And uh, so all you spend all that time on prep and getting it ready and taping it off and all that stuff, and then you paint. 
and the actual paint running the gun is the is the skill part of it. Right, and that doesn't take that long. I mean, when we get it prepped, taped, and all that, these guys they can paint one in the base white in about two and a half hours. So you'll spend two and a half weeks getting it ready, two and a half hours of spray. But then to do your additional colors, you have to let that paint cure for a while, pull all that paper and everything off and do your layout. Only one color. Then after that's done, pull that off and start over. So you're looking at multiple days of just taping and laying out things. And when you've got ribs and rivets, you've got to spend uh, a lot of time hand taping all that stuff to get nice, clean, sharp lines. Uh, that's where you'll notice on some of the cheaper paint jobs, they don't go to the details, to, and you'll see jagged lines. You'll see, say, in the flap coats don't get painted. Uh, you know, there'll be overspray up in the gear wells, things like that. So that's one one thing that you'll notice. Uh, you know, the, the windows where the seam sealer is, you know, that we always have nice, clean, sharp lines. You know, they're not rough tape. I mean, we, have to, we use a special tape, a uh, fine line tape for doing that to give you nice, clean lines along the paint edges. You mentioned when uh, when you shot primer on this, just before it was dry, then you shot the white the base coat. Right. The, the the primer that we use is what they call a wet on wet, and all all it has to do is flash off for about 20 minutes, and then you can apply the top coat to it. Uh, it doesn't have to be sanded or anything like that. It actually bites down into the metal. It's so an edging primer. And that's where you get a good adhesion. You don't have a uh, peeling problem a few years down the road. Uh, our paint jobs are, are, if they're hangered and properly taken care of, uh, they're good for 20, 25 years. Uh, even out on a ramp, you'll get, you know, 15, 20 years out of it. Uh, the paints today are way better than they were, say, 25 years ago. The urethanes are uh, get you a good high gloss, uh, low maintenance, not something you have to wax on them every six months or something. I mean, that uh, if you do, that's mainly just to keep, it helps you keep it clean. But as far as the paint itself, it holds up for you. Cool. How long does it take to cure the paint job after you paint it? Well, fly will cure uh, 48 hours. A full cure about 30 days. About 30 days. Yeah. But you can fly it. We can paint something, and, and within two days it can be fun. Okay. Cool. Well, so there you have it. P6 flying overhead. It's great noise. So there you have it. Uh, what it really goes goes into painting an airplane. How much time and effort. Uh, that, that makes it happen. The materials aren't cheap, but the labor to make it all do, all look right and uh, make you happy, that, that takes an awful long time. Yes, it does. But yeah. well, we're going to take a quick tour around the airplane now. And, and uh, These guys are uh, they just clean, uh, cleaning it up after uh, pulling off all the uh, uh, coverings to, to shoot the wings. We just finished the wings what, Friday? Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is three days later, four days later. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna take a quick look. All right, now we're here with Shane uh, Stevens. Stevens, mm -hmm. and he's one of the guys that worked on uh, Charlie for us. Uh, so Shane, tell us a little bit about being a painter and uh, how this all this stuff works. Well, it's I mean it's uh, as you heard from my dad earlier, uh, it's a long process. It's more prepping than painting, so you have to get the surface as prepped as good as you can so that the paint comes out nice and smooth. So that's that's the biggest thing that we do. I saw you working on uh, the right wing, mm -hmm. uh, touching up all the, because you ne invariably you don't get perfect lines. No, I mean, nobody comes out with perfect lines, so I was smoothing out the edges, and then anything that didn't get paint, we were touching it up. So, 
Yeah, make sure everything looks nice and smooth. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate the business. <laughs> <laughs> so with this one, we were going to shoot the, uh, basically leave, we're going to do basically a, a scuff and then shoot the base white that was on the wing before. Correct. Because it looked like it's a pretty good paint job. Yeah, it didn't look bad. Didn't look bad, and uh, I thought it looked pretty good. So we were just going to add the starburst after that. Uh, but when we... So we did add the starburst. Yeah. And when we went to peel the, the tape and the paper, the paint that was on the wing originally peeled all the way off to the metal. So we had to start all the way over. So Yeah, yeah. and it, it came off in big chunks. I'm going to put chunks. some yeah. pictures of that up for you to see, but it was a mess. Yeah. And... Uh, and then, then you had to strip it and go back to metal again. But yes. What it looked like to me when I saw the strip, mm -hmm. it looked like, man, it's, it came off in sheets. It was the easiest strip job, probably. <laughs> well, so that, well, yes, because the, well, one, the paint job that was originally on there wasn't adhered. And then the one that we had just done was fresh. So anytime you put stripper on fresh paint, it, it works really quick. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. Very yeah. nice. All right, I'm here with Brandon, and he's also worked on the airplane. He's actually painted a couple airplanes for me in the past, back when uh, you worked with Grady O'Neill yes. at the Northwest Regional. Uh, great job. He did all the layout work. He's the he's the Bonanza expert for laying out stuff. So, well, I yeah, I don't remember your last name. I'm sorry. McNichol. McNichol. Yes. Okay. Well, great. So tell us a little bit about about the job, about how to do it, and. Uh, and how you got into doing this. Um, I've always been in aviation, and I just sort of fell into, into painting. Uh, but I'm also an A&P and all that. And I've taken time off from my paint career to go work on things and, and stuff. And, uh, this job, it was a good job. It was fairly straightforward. Uh, had a good time doing it. Um, as Shane said, the uh, peeling on the wings wasn't fun. Uh, you never want to see that. Never want to see that. But, better to uh, catch it now. Better to catch it now and uh, get rid of all the problems and start from the beginning and make it right. Yeah, and added about two weeks yeah. to the process. But anyway, I think it looks pretty dramatic. I think pretty I'm glad awesome. you liked it. Yeah. So, how's it laying out the uh, paint job? That's the hard thing, is take that concept and then put it on the airplane and make it fit. Uh, a little bit of it is just you got to start somewhere so you start at the front and you start getting some ideas laid out and then you step back and look at it going does this work does this not work and you make adjustments and you keep playing with it until you get it oh okay i like this cool well all right so there you have it brandon thanks for the paint job i <laughs> appreciate time. it well, there you have it. The uh, how do you paint an airplane? You know all the different things that needs to go into this. You know having, uh, I guess you got to start with a budget. You got to have a, but actually the budget is a notional thing until you can have a scheme and you get some quotes for accomplishing that scheme. The more complicated it is, the more colors it has. This basically has a base coat of white and then red and blue. That's two colors. The more colors you have, the more expensive it is. The more time it takes. So. Now you have that concept of that, you come up with a scheme, does it work with the airplane, does it work with the resale concept, and uh, then uh, do you like it? Okay, that's the big part. And off you go. And now you have an idea why it costs so much to do this, because people cost money. Okay, the material is expensive, and these two things are pretty expensive. The blue is actually pretty expensive, amazingly so. but. Uh, the, it's nothing in comparison to the labor, the sheer amount of physical labor it takes to uh, come out with this as a design. And uh, if you take care of it and you keep it hangered, it's going to last 20 or 30 years, you know. And uh, then it kind of makes a bit more sense. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video because I enjoyed making it, sort of. <laughs> I, I love the result. Um, but anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, hit the subscribe button. It's down there, and if you want to get notifications, uh, hit the bell. That really helps. And if you're interested, join the membership. Uh, join us uh, on YouTube in the membership uh, section, because I put uh, bonus footage in there, and I put pre. I let people uh, know what's going to be posted uh, early, so you can have early access to uh, what's actually going on. 
or what the next video is going to be. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flower.